I want to talk about how I go about reading technical books. And if you're not used to reading textbooks or technical books, especially programming books, you're going to you're going to open it up and realize huh, they're very dry and they're not honestly they're not the most exciting thing to read after you've just spent your entire day programming and then you find yourself going to read the book about it. It's it feels kind of silly, but if I can make one thing clear is that it's not about, you know, just reading for reading's sake. It's, it's reading for, you know, okay, how do I apply this at the end of the day? And that's really what it's all about, at least for me. When I started to read about .NET, just in general, that changed everything for me because it helped me to not be reliant just on learning from other people, but it helped me to be a little bit more self-sufficient, which helped me to be more confident, which I think in return made me a better programmer. And it helped me figure out what I like and what I don't like. And sometimes when you're just kind of in the uh, when you're just kind of in like the doldrums of not really knowing what you want to do uh, and not really knowing what technology you want to focus on, I found that that's that's when I've enjoyed programming the least. It's when I've specialized and it's when I've focused on one very narrow like subset of technology. That's the time that I've realized that I like programming the the best because whenever you focus on one thing, right? Whenever you just hone in on one very, you know, acute, you know, area of, of, uh, interest, that's when you get good at it because you're, you allow yourself to fully, uh, just throw yourself into that category of, you know, technology or whatever it is. And for me, that was.net and books, you know, I, now I just read every .net book that I can get my hands on. Not because, you know, they're most the most enjoyable books to read, but it's because I've figured out this is what I want to specialize in. And so I've talked about on this channel, but I'm going to talk about it again here. You got you have to figure out what in the world you want to specialize in, because that for me is what changed everything in terms of how I go about learning. So when I take a .NET book, I'm primarily primarily looking for, uh, dot, you know, API designs, um, API patterns, how to connect, uh, you know, different layers in the solution, like so, so, uh, services or repositories, just all the design patterns around that. So I'm going to get a book that, that hones in on that, but I want to get it that is, I want to get a book that's very uh, technical because there's a lot of uh, what I would call generic, very like, you know, 30,000 foot view uh, books about design patterns, but they never get... They never get into the details, so that can that can leave you honestly a little bit more confused than compared to when you started. So when I look for a .NET book, uh, like for example, where's the book? I'm looking around for it. Uh, Microservices Design Patterns in .NET by Trevor Williams. That's a very very good book because it's it's the rare book where it's technical, but also uh, it's it's abstract enough that you could probably apply it to other you know paradigms of programming. But I look for that and I look for, okay, is this technical enough that I could go implement this today, but is it general enough that I can extract the overarching principle? Because there's a fine line here. When you read a technical book, there's some books that are just going to be like screenshots of code snippets. And the temptation there is that you just are, you know, reading a book, opening it, and then going on the side and typing out that, that screenshot. But you're not, you're, in essence, you're not really learning anything because you're just strictly following along a tutorial. Now, those have their place a little bit, but there's a fine line between a book like that and then a book that's just purely uh, academic, where there's not really any code, but it's more or less just like the theory, like this is a design pattern. This is the motivation for this design pattern. And so you need to blend both of those worlds into into uh, into one, right? Meaning you got to get a book that kind of floats somewhere in the middle. Some books are going to gravitate more towards the theory. Some are going to gravitate more towards the tutorial books. And it's, it's hard to find a book that is in the middle, but that is what I look for. It's very difficult. I would say probably for every 10 books you read, one of them is going to fit into that category, but it's going to be that one that you're going to have on your bookshelf. that's going to be annotated the most. That's been my experience. And I'm about to read that book for the third time, and that's one of them that, that floats around in that middle area for me. 
So that's one major thing I look for. So I always have, um, I always have a pen and sticky notes uh, by my book. This is how I take notes on sticky notes. So that way I can mark the page, but also you know jot some things down. I also then go at the end of the chapter, assuming there's references, which I feel like there would be. It, I feel like it would be a red flag if there wasn't references. But I always look for uh, other books that are referenced, and that's how I found other books as well. So I'll go and look for other books. I'll circle them and I'll write those books down, and then I'll kind of skim to see if there's any papers that stand out. I found a couple papers that way. I don't typically read papers like as my primary thing because those are very dry. And those are very sometimes, uh, they're very hard sometimes to understand because of how technical they are. They have their place, obviously, but if you're, they can be a little bit overwhelming uh, sometimes to read. Um, but that I look, I always look at the end of the chapter to get more material. Um, but then I'll just continue to read the chapter. But I've noticed that as I'm reading the book, I try not to get stuck, meaning I don't, I don't feel the need to have to code everything along when like as I'm reading because if I tried to do that if I tried to code as I'm reading at the same time it would take me way too long to get through the book to the point where it would almost not even be worth it to start because it would take me weeks I've learned that technical books you can't linger on them you have to you have to finish them in a short sitting if you linger on them for months I found that I begin to forget the material and then it kind of negates the point of reading it to begin with. So you got it. You got to get through it. And when you start it, you know, give yourself a few weeks. Like I, you know, one a month is a good initial goal. And I feel like that's a good amount of time to get through any, really any programming book and, and retain a lot of the information. But again, write it down, but don't, you know, don't highlight everything. Just try to pick out the key things that you're trying to learn. So if I'm reading a .NET book, I'm, I'm primarily looking for design patterns. And as I'm looking for design patterns, that naturally leads into uh, asynchronous forms of communication across you know, different services and how do .NET APIs or, or .NET solutions communicate with one another or, you know, anything like that. So that's going to lead into uh, different message brokers. And we've talked about that in the channel, RabbitMQ. Uh, so I'm going to be looking out for that. And I'm going to be looking for sources that have, hey, this talks about uh, RabbitMQ, this talks about asynchronous communication. But once you figure out, like once you get the topics, like if I look at, okay, asynchronous communication, I could naturally then go to a book like Concurrency and .NET because it's going to allow me to paralyze that, right? It's going to allow me to write code to not only a single source, but I can I can make, let's say, multiple calls at once. And how do I work with immutable data type? So it just kind of naturally stems out from like your your first book. So if you find if you start out with a good book, you should have you should have a couple different books and papers that kind of branch off from that first book. And so it's very important to to read a lot so that you can identify like, hey, this is a good starting point, uh, because the last thing you want to the last thing you want to find yourself read is is reading a book that's not very good, and it kind of like it kind of gets a bad taste in your mouth for other books because you're like, you know, man, is this how they all are? And there's definitely some bad ones. You you have to you have to filter books, um, you know, just like anything else. But once you find a good one, you're gonna really you're going to really be interested in it, I think, because it's going to unlock for you uh, different things that you, you know, you'll be able to do as a programmer. But it's going to give you motivation because it'll it'll make you realize how much you can learn from books. Uh, it's, it's pretty incredible uh, as it relates to programming. Another key thing um, that I look for in, you know, technical books uh, is, you know, not so much like, Hey, like step by step instructions on how to do something because that that quickly becomes a little bit out of date. But I look for uh, I look for justifiable concepts, and that's a hard thing to do. Like finding data driven um, data driven uh, decisions is very difficult because sometimes when you read a technical book, it'll say, you know, we found you know it's best to use this. But sometimes they don't like, they don't explain why. So always try to find the why. And if you're unsure about something, jot it down and ask, hey, 
why is this the case? Like, why is it necessary to introduce a load balancer? Why is it necessary to, you know, horizontally scale in our system? And once you start asking the why, you're probably going to start looking for, hey, I need to learn this thing. And I need to learn, oh, I need to learn uh, SQL. I need to learn uh, system design. And once you start asking those questions like why, then you're really going to unlock you know, the next, the next level, so to speak, in programming. But I found that uh, the only way I can ask why is when I actually get, allow myself to get through enough of the content. And what I mean by that is that I try, again, not to linger too much on the book, but I also try not to, like, get, get stuck on the page. You know what I mean? Like, try to figure out, okay, is this next paragraph is is primarily talking about you know this high level concept and you know kind of you, you got to try to shift your reading from like read every word to like you got to start picking up the pace reading you got to start not skimming but like you got to start you know getting a little bit faster and i found that reading speed is necessary for technical books if you ever want to get through a reasonable amount and I found that uh, for technical books, just getting a general famir- familiarity with the concept is often a good starting point. And because once you once you get that thing, like once you see something in the book, say, hey, I didn't know that, and you write it down, you don't have to necessarily linger on the page. You're like, oh, I don't know this. So I'll go back to it. and just But just continue reading and just get through the book. Then go back and say, hey, what's what you know, what was this? How does this fit into the broader context? But the important thing is to finish. You got to you have to finish reading at at a, you know, in a reasonable amount of time. You you just again, this is basically their point, but you can't linger. You got to get through it and you have to set you have to set a cap for yourself. And this is kind of actually why checking books out from the library works pretty well is because you have to return it. Right. So you have to finish and, you know let's say three weeks, right? Because you have to return it. So checking books out for the library is a great way to accomplish this goal. So if I, I always first check the library and see what books they have available in their catalog. If they have something that is interesting, I check it out and I read it. And it's really easy because let's say for .NET, I'll just type in you know .NET in the search and see what books come back. Now you have to you know do some filtering. You might have to look for C sharp. You might have to look for system design, but see what books are already available before you go buying a ton of them, just to get a feel for what you like and, and get a feel for like what style of book that you know it is you're looking for because there's a lot of different styles of books, and this leads me into my next thing of it's good to identify what publisher you prefer. I've noticed that Addison Wesley. Um, Publishing seems to be a lot more abstract and academic. I've noticed that Manning Publishers uh, seems to consistently be the highest quality uh, of books that kind of achieve that middle ground uh, area that we talked about. Uh, Packet publishing can be hit or miss. There can be really good packet publishing books, but there can be some ones that are not so good. I've had uh, experience with one where the it wasn't even finished the last sentence basically said that there's gonna be another chapter but the book ended so there's you can see there's some oddities definitely with some packet publishing books i think that they're more like independently you know um authored and reviewed but uh packet publishing seems to have the more seems to have a lot more um like selective topics and has generally good code examples if you find a quality book uh, for example, that one uh, .NET, um, I think it was called Memory, Effective .NET Memory Management. Um, I'm looking at it. That's actually the same author, author Trevor Williams. Um, very good book, and that's in packet publishing. Uh, my, my favorite book, Currency and .NET, is through Manning. Uh, and then, like, the, um, I'm trying to think of a good Addison Wesley uh, example. I don't know where the book is, but it's... Um, I think it's called web web scalability. Um, I forget what it's called. Re- refactoring is one common book that you probably come across. That's Addison. Um, oh, another another publisher is uh, McGraw Hill, and McGraw Hill uh, 
published, I believe, the web scalability for the startup engineer. So you're going to come across major publishers, and I think it might be good to read enough to know like which publisher you might you may gravitate towards and what you probably should expect from a given publisher because there, there's going to be differences, right? There's going to be a range of like styles and uh, experiences, right? Because you also, I think, may benefit from like, hey, you know, this author has this experience. Like if the author is like, if the author of the book wrote the the framework you're reading about, it's probably a good source. <laughs> if the author of the book never used it, but only in an academic setting, you know, you may maybe look for another book. So, but again, that only really comes through, you know, reading enough of them. Uh, another way to actually find a lot of good books is go on um, college syllabus, uh, syllabi, syllabuses, <laughs> go on those and look through like courses uh, that interest you and then look at the syllabus and then see if you can find books um, that way. That's an, that's a pretty easy way to, to find um, credible books as well. Um, I've used that in the past uh, to find books and it's, it's pretty easy if the if they publish the uh, course syllabus. Um, but honestly, at the end of the day, you just have to start reading. And I would, I would strongly suggest to not use any type, any type of, uh, AI assistance as you're going about learning these topics in the beginning, just because you want to make sure that you allow yourself the, the, the time to think about it yourself and to truly understand before you just start going right into using AI. Um, so that's what I would say. Just stick with like pen and paper at first and take notes and just read through the whole thing and then start your, your personal project. Um, I, most of the time, I've always had some personal project open and just like easily accessible to myself that like, you know, is usually in some kind of working state that I can just spin up on my computer really fast. That is very helpful as well. Like if you just have a, if you have something that you've just kind of been tinker, tinkering around with, if you're reading something interesting in the book, just implement it in your personal project and just see if you can figure it out. That's probably where I've learned the most about ra random stuff, um, like cues and stuff is just like fiddling around with the settings on my, on my own and just seeing what works and what doesn't. So, um, definitely do that. But yeah, anyway, I love reading. Um, and reading really has changed my life and it's changed my career as well. Um, I, I always try to think of book suggestions for people. And I really think that, um, if you're not reading, I feel like you're missing a lot of potential in your career and potentially some, um, you know, some, some progress that you could have. So anyway, thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next one.